What's up guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So if you're new here, the type of videos and content that I post are my documented series as an entrepreneur where you get to learn and see all my wins and all my losses. So if you're looking to learn how to make money on your own terms, this is going to be the perfect YouTube channel for you. So make sure to subscribe, turn that bell notification on and make sure to turn that like button blue. Now, to give you guys some preface about this video and about this actual RV flip, by the time you're watching this, I will have already flipped the whole entire RV from the beginning to the end and made a profit on it. So make sure you stay tuned for that and continue to watch this series of the RV flip. I found this actual RV on the marketplace for an extremely good deal and I hopped on it within 15 minutes. So one tip I can give you right off the jump is that when you are actually looking for deals, whether that's a car, truck, RV, on the actual marketplace, you need to act quickly. And that's one of the keys to this business. And one of the keys as an entrepreneur is immediate action. Now, with that being said, we definitely went through some trials and tribulations on the way back from Arizona. The actual transmission blew up on the, on the RV on the way back in the middle of the desert. So we literally had to figure out what we we're gonna do. And that's what you get to see, our wins and our failures and how we overcome our problems as entrepreneurs in this particular journey with this RV. Now let's get into it. What is up you guys? We're out here. Where are we at, Tyler? The Phoenix. Phoenix, Arizona. We just got a new cop. It's a $4,200 Econoline, I think it's called a coach. Ford Econoline coach, RV. It's completely remodeled on the inside. I'll show you guys in a little bit, but just want to give you guys a quick look around of what the new cop is. These are selling for right around 10,000 on the bottom of the market. And we scored this remodeled version of one for 4,200. So I seen it, it was posted maybe 26 minutes. Put the guy up, told them we will leave. It was about a six hour drive. The guy told me he had at least, he says he could have sold it 65 times before the time I got there. So uh, definitely a really good come up. I'm excited to get this back to San Diego. And uh, keep you guys updated. <laughs> so <laughs> we're here on the side of the freeway some shit clapped out uh so my brother and i tyler was driving it um i was actually driving in front of him in the lancer we have like a like a follower car a chaser car and i was in front of the rv and we we're driving on the freeway here in arizona you can see the mountains in the background too but when i was looking at my rear mirror i could see smoke behind the rv so I pulled up next to my brother, had him pass me, and it was blowing all kinds of smoke. So now uh, we end up finding out. I look underneath, and I'll show you how the underneath looks. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's like a lot of transmission fluid. And um, the transmission was acting funny, right? Well, yeah, it was acting funny. All of a sudden it started losing power. Yeah, so one thing that we noticed when we were driving it is that the transmission started like kind of being funky. and. Uh, what we ended up finding out, we researched and we ended up finding out that it's actually due to the transmission uh, overloading. It has like an overload and we found out that the tires are actually almost flat. So we believe that was uh, creating resistance and also led to the this thing called a uh, pump seal that uh, actually ends up leaking when it overheats the transmission. So we believe the transmission overheated because there was an overload due to the drag to the flat tires. And I can show you the guys the, how the tires look right now. They look pretty bad. Flat. You can see it's pretty flat here. It's pretty clapped. But nonetheless, you see too all this from the bar. It was smoking like crazy. But we're figuring out a fix. We actually went down the street to a Chevron. Got some ATF food for it and we're putting it in so we'll see what happens. Nice. We're gonna tow it and go to the way. Oh, yeah. They said that we're not covered by RV, even though we're a premium member. They're giving us some bullshit, too. Yeah, they had somebody call us and basically give us a quote, and they ended up quoting us over $1,500. So, yeah, and then, I mean, they called us and they said that they're gonna put us on hold for 90 minutes. 
and so someone can actually get here. And then finally, we got somebody on the phone to give us a quote. Some guy didn't give a and it was like, oh, you know, we're gonna have to charge you from my time from leaving the shop to get to you guys all the way to California. And that's just for that. We had to charge you per mile too, it was like $3 a mile, right? All right, and they wanted to charge us for the time that he comes back all the way back from the shop once he drops the RV off back in California. Yeah, so we said, uh, we're gonna pass on that. And then we figured it out, which is when we got the ATF fluid from um, high premium Chevron ATF fluid. Some in. We put five quarts in right now. We're just waiting to see what happens. We're going to put it in. Hopefully it dries still pretty good. We're going to drive down to the next exit to go to Chevron and put actual air in the tires. So that will prevent the uh, overheating of the transmission. And then we'll see from there what happens. And if not, we can figure it out. We'll park somewhere and pull the transmission out, whatever we have to do. But it should always happen. Uh, we'll figure it out and uh, we'll keep you guys updated. All right, so we got everything buttoned up. There's Big Bro, he's about to drive it. He's about to be the trooper. We're gonna see what's gonna happen. I thought it was taking for a second. Yeah. See the bone. Looks like it's not dripping shit. So we should be good. Perfect. See what happens, hopefully no smoke. Pray everybody. <laughs> I mean, my brother's gonna drive it. We're, I'm gonna be right behind him. I'm gonna drive right behind him and see what happens. We're gonna go to the next exit, put some air in the tires, and go from there. It looks like it is coming from that seal. See, it's dripping though? Yeah, watch, look underneath. Oh, yeah, it does. All right, so we filled up all the tires. Uh, we got the dually tires filled in the back. Right now, all that's left is a saggy tire. You can see we gotta get, since it's metal, a metal tip, it's a lot harder to get to. But this is the last, pretty much the last obstruction that we have and hopefully it'll be on our way. I checked the Chani fluid. Chani fluid's looking pretty good. So we'll see what's cracking. All right, quick update. We got everything cracking and teed off on the RV. It took us about three, four hours since the whole entire thing cracked down. But everything on the RV is completely up to par. We got all the ATF fluid inside of it. All the tires are all filled up. Back tire, dually tires are good. I seen it was dripping a little bit of ATF fluid so far, but we gotta wait and see what happens. Uh, we got some pretty high grades on the way back. So um, if this shit blows up, fuck it. At the end of the day, at least we tried. But yeah, man, we overcame some adversity and that's part of the entrepreneur journey is there will always be, there will always be bumps in the road. And how, how are you gonna handle the bumps in the road? You gotta figure it out, right? So, you know, we figured it out, made it happen so far and we'll see what happens next. And if some shit comes up again, we'll figure it out once again. But so far so good and uh, we'll keep you guys updated. Another day, trial and tribulations. The getter car completely clapped out can't really see in the camera but it's completely smoking literally see all the smoke up in the air that one's leaking transmission fluid this one for some reason just completely clapped it smells like shit. <laughs> sounds like the serpentine boat's squeaking but that's not the problem yeah once you try to start it again maybe because something's dripping on it something's dripping on it so it's making it squeak like a liquid oh like Blown out liquid? Yeah. Completely clouded. <laughs> yeah, that's loud. Wait, let me see. It's smoking. Bring your light over here, Tyler. I think something seized. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Oh, like a pulley? How much you want to bet that alternator pulley seized? So that's why you hear it squeaking so loud. Maybe that's what the clanking was? Maybe the belt's getting hot. Was it resistant? Yeah, because it's, it's... It's not moving. Yeah. Well, something's not moving. One thing's not moving. So, the dilemma we face right now, this one completely clapped out. This one hasn't clapped out all the way. Thank Jesus Christ. Just the transmission, uh, the transmission pump 
seal clapped and we're still facing those repercussions. Uh, we're out here, I think we're, how far are we? About an hour and 45 away. Total trip was like five hours, so we made it majority of the way there. Um, you know, nonetheless, trials and tribulations. You've heard when it rains, it pours. This is exactly what we're going through. But, I mean, what's the opposite of when it rains, it pours? What can we say? For good. When riches come, it really comes. Question mark. But, but we're, we're once again facing some bumps in the road. But once these are creased out, you know that we'll be... Uh, headed towards profit and um just gotta figure out how the fuck we're gonna get home but we're almost there we got one more huge mountain to go through like a super steep grade so first we gotta figure out how we're gonna get this back or what we're gonna do the lancer the chase car and then um figure out the next problems <laughs> as entrepreneurs we're problem solvers and this is only a, a small playground of what we'll experience in life so with that being said we'll keep you guys updated so we have decided we're gonna leave this behind, try to take this all the way back. Um, so we ended up finding out, we confirmed that it had a seized, what is it? Alternator pulley. Seized alternator pulley, so that's why it was squeaking, was because the actual crank pulley was spinning the, the actual uh, pulley, the crank pulley, and it wasn't spinning the actual serpentine belt that's connected to the alternator because the alternator is seized. Thus, making the rubbing noise against the alternator belt. I mean, thus making noise against the crank pulley part that's spinning and the serpentine belt's not moving. Hope that made complete sense, don't know. But yeah, we're gonna leave this here. Right now, Tyler put up a note, um, says, <laughs> car <laughs> trouble. See we can put a note, so if anything happens, you can see that the chase car has all kinds of uh, ATF fluid on it since it's behind the actual RV. But we're gonna drive this, we're gonna go to a gas station, get some more ATF fluid for it, uh, drive two more hours back home. I will keep you guys updated and see what happens next. All right, so it's uh, 12.41 in the morning. Technically it took us three days to get here, but back here in our hometown. It took us maybe about 12 hours to get back here. We left a wounded soldier back in uh, about two and a half hours away. Central. No central, so we still gotta go fix that. Important thing is we're back with the RV in San Diego. We never thought we'd make it, but we made it. Persevered, and got done what we needed to get done. So now we gotta wait until I can pull the transmission out of it um, and redo that pump seal on it, and then it'll be good to go. Clean the inside, I'll show you guys how the inside looks. But just to give you guys an update, we finally made it back. All right, I'm making this video in the editing studio, but either way, I want to let you guys know this is exactly what's going to happen in your entrepreneur journey. Um, as you can see right off the rip, we we're already experiencing massive trials and tri uh, tribulations in the actual process of acquiring this RV. In the next few episodes, you're going to see how we actually have to pull the transmission out and repair the transmission. Then we end up moving into the inside of the actual RV. But either way, once again, you guys, you're always going to face stuff like this in life in general. So you're going to see what we do and how we overcome a lot of our big issues in this particular flip. But either way, we make lots of money in this flip. And uh, stay tuned to the next videos.